key focal point is on discipleship, the necessity of discipleship. And when you look at the pattern of growth in the New Testament, it's very clear. There are four simple steps. The first step was on making disciples. Go ahead and study Acts chapter 2, 40 to 47. You will realize people were being discipled. They just weren't being converted and being brought in, and then they sit at a meeting. They were being discipled on a regular basis. Now, from that body of disciples, leaders begin to recognize who the Holy Spirit was raising up to become more leaders, a second generation of leaders. And then those leaders were raised up and sent out. So from the body of disciples, the first step, make disciples. The second step, from the body of disciples, recognizing who God is raising up to be leaders. And then those leaders, what do we do with them? Do we keep them? Do we hold on to them? Do we make them stay in our church? No, we send them out. We send them out. And when they go out, what do they do? They plant churches. They preach the gospel. They make disciples. And out of that process, planting a church, preaching the gospel, making disciples, they produce more leaders who get sent out. And what happens from just one church and then to several churches now becomes in a growth process, becomes what's called church multiplication. And eventually, as you follow this pattern, it gives rise to a national movement of churches. Started with one leader making disciples. And now you have a national church movement. Churches everywhere, based on leaders being recognized, raised up, sent out, who preach the gospel, plant churches, make disciples, raising up more leaders, sending them out but you're not done there. There's one more step that's critical. And this is a step that many leaders in many countries around the world do not follow. This is a critical step. It's the fourth step. From church multiplication, you go to a national movement, but then you must go to a cross-cultural involvement, sending missionaries out, sending leaders who will go out to other cultures, other nations, around the world. And when you send those people out, what do they do? They make disciples. They start the same pattern over, making disciples. It all starts with making disciples. This is a critical issue. People around the world are hungry to hear the truth and to have a hope based on something that's more than just a wish. And there's only one place they can find that, and that is with Jesus Christ. Now, I do want to say something very serious to you, and I want you to think about this. There are many people from many religions who are coming to Christ. I shared with you, this with you in another teaching. Millions of people coming to Christ who once called themselves Hindus or Buddhists or Muslims. And they are nominal in their faith, very shallow. They are that faith because they were born into that family or born into that particular nation. And because they're nominal, when they hear the gospel, they hear the truth, they can easily be brought to Christ as something that is real. But I want to say to you something that I hope will make you think. When Christians, those who call themselves Christians, are nominal, shallow. Maybe they grew up in a Christian home. Maybe they went to church when they were a child. Maybe they were born in a particular nation and so they say, well, I'm not a Buddhist, I'm not a Hindu, I'm not a Muslim, so I guess I'm a Christian. They don't know. They don't even know what it is to be a Christian. These people are also easily deceived and seduced into another religion. We are not deceiving. We are bringing people the truth. But there are many other spirits, as the New Testament says, that have gone out into the world, the spirit of the Antichrist, going out into the world, drawing people into deception and lies. There are many groups in our world today who call themselves Christian, but they are not Christian. They do not follow Jesus, nor do they obey the Word of God. It is critical that we disciple everyone who is in our church. 
If, there, if you are a pastor or a leader in the church, every single person in your church should not only be being discipled, but they should also be discipling someone else. Just because you're the pastor, you are not the only discipler. This is critical to securing people in the faith where they cannot be deceived, they cannot be led astray. Their root goes deep into Jesus Christ and into His precious eternal Word.